everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books that I read in 2019. I feel like I read a lot of books that I loved this year, but these were the books that really just left their mark on me and that I really felt like stuck with me over time. And so I can't wait to share them with you guys. There are a few rules I set forward for myself when making this list. The first rule being that I can only pick one book from each series, so I'm going to be picking the book that I liked the best of the series and go from there. <laughs> We're gonna go count down from 10 all the way to one. Coming in at number 10 on the list is There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. I actually received an arc of this one at BookCon and I'm so happy that I picked it up because it's really, really good. And I'm gonna read a little quote from the summary. The deceiver ensnares the world with lies. To death's pale hand the wicked fall. That which sleeps in dust shall rise, and in their wake will come a darkness. For generations, the seven prophets used their visions to end wars and unite nations. However, one day, 100 years ago, they all disappeared, leaving one final prophecy behind. This prophecy foretold the age of darkness and the birth of one final prophet that could bring the salvation of the world or its destruction. With chaos on the horizon, five lives are set on a collision course, a prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as a pale hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, a reckless gambler with the power to find anyone or anything and a dying girl on the verge of giving up one of them or all of them could break the world what will come of the world when these five lives become entwined i really loved the different powers that you could have in this book they are called graces and you can see they're here in the book and you can have grace of heart which enhances strength agility and speed grace of blood which gives and takes energy to heal or harm grace of mind which creates object imbued with unique properties and the grace of sight which senses and locates living beings this story has a lot of different perspectives, but it kept the book for me really interesting. And, and even though there were a lot of different perspectives, it wasn't too confusing. It really kept the story moving as we see how all of these five lives come together. Each character had such a strong and unique voice, so I was really looking forward to seeing what was going to happen next in each of their lives. I always love the idea of a prophecy. I just think that they're so intriguing to try and pick up clues and piece it together. And we learn like the final prophecy at the end of part one and I really just like love reading that over and trying to see if I can figure out what was going on and I just love when prophecies are turned on their head. I just think it adds an element in the storytelling that can work really well when done right and this prophecy was definitely done right. I just felt like this book from page one hit the ground running every page there was a new twist and turn like i could barely you know it just like kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time because it was just so good and just so involved and there was just so much going on like i truly loved all of these characters and i am really really just like so excited to see where this ends because like things really just went crazy <laughs> crazier than they were before which is just impossible at the end of this book and i think that the sequel is going to be wild <laughs> in spot number nine we have wicked box by cat cho and this was actually one of the last books that i read in december so i didn't even get to do a wrap up on it but yes it came in at spot number nine because i just loved it so much gooby young is a Gumiho, otherwise known as a nine-tailed fox that eats the soul of men to survive. However, she's a little different because she's only a half a Gumiho. When she comes across a young boy, Jihoon, in the woods being attacked by a goblin, she takes a risk and saves his life. However, this leads to her losing her fox speed, which is her Gumiho soul that she needs to survive. When they next meet, they are drawn to each other, but Myung must find a way to restore her fox speed to her soul before the next full moon or else she will die. And so she must choose between her immortal life or Jihoon's immortal life. This book was just so cute and I've heard that it's kind of like a fantasy k-drama which I haven't watched any k-dramas but like I think I want to after reading this because I'm just so intrigued. The pacing was great like there was never a dull moment there was always some other twist and turn that was like shocking and it was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed learning about different aspects of Korean culture and we do get like a glossary in the back so I feel like I learned like a lot of cool terms and uh learn more about a mythology that I wasn't familiar with at all before reading this. I think it's really great that reading can expose you to different cultures and stuff like that. I thought the romance between Mi Young and Ji Hoon was just like so, so freaking cute. Like it was adorable. I loved all their interactions. It was just so sweet. And Ji Hoon is like the softest boy and I love 
some good soft boys in literature. This book also really explores a lot of family dynamics in terms of just like feeling like you've been abandoned by your family or isolated by your family. A lot of good like mother-child dynamics it talks about. It's not just about Mi Young and Ji Hoon's relationship even though that is a big part of it. It really I think this book focuses on family dynamics and a lot of different family dynamics and I think that's what made it really enjoyable for me is we kind of see these two characters work through their issues with their families and how it affects them as a person and it's just really really well done and really heart-wrenching like I felt like I was tearing up every few pages or so just because of like how touching and emotional this book was like it was just really good <laughs> We have The Daughter of the Pirate King duology by Trisha Levenseller, which is Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen. But for this one, we'll just go with Daughter of the Pirate King. 17-year-old pirate captain Alosa allows herself to purposely be captured by an enemy pirate ship in order to retrieve an ancient hidden map that leads to untold treasures. She is a ruthless pirate and there is only one thing standing in her way, first mate Raiden. The two dance around each other as Alosa tries all of her tricks to try and retrieve the map, but Raiden won't let her get away that easily. I absolutely adore all of Trisha Levenseller's work. She is now an autobi author for me. I am just like, I love, love, love everything that she puts out. And I think I honestly would maybe want to reread this in summer because I read this for the first time on audio and I think it'd be cool to reread it physically and annotate it. But yes, it's just like a swashbuckling adventure and like Alosa is such a strong lead character. She's so badass. She is not afraid to go after what she wants and her, the dynamic between her and Raiden is just great. Like they just have such great witty banter and I think that they play off of one another really well and I just absolutely adore this duology. We have Monstrous by Major Lee Lu and Sana Takeda, which, which is like a gothic fantasy steampunk graphic novel slash comic. So normally graphic novels and comics do not make the, my top 10 list, but I just love this one so much. It had to be on here. Like the illustration style is just absolutely gorgeous. And if you're someone that loves reading fantasy, it's really cool to see it played out in like this visual format, as you can see here. It's really cool. It's set in an alternative world of art deco beauty and steampunk horror. Maika Halfwolf is on a mission to find out what happened to her mother, which leads her to infiltrate the lair of the witches. The witches are on the side of the humans in a war between humans and Arcanics. Arcanics are those that have animalistic features and are descended from the gods. Maika is hiding a secret of her own, however, wherein she has a piece of a monster's soul within her that is slowly taking over her body. There is just like so much more to the story and like as you go through each volume, you get to learn more about the world and the characters and it's just so, you just really see Maika's struggle to come to terms with her past and what is happening to her and just like the way that the monster takes over her. Really, really fascinating, really cool to see in a visual format and I just like have fallen head over heels in love with these comics. Coming in at number six is King's Bane by Claire Legrand. If you know me, you know that I absolutely love Furyborn and so King's Bane definitely had to be on this list because this sequel lived up to the hype for me. However, every time I try and tell people to read Furyborn, no one likes it. So I don't know, I guess I'm like the only one that is a Furyborn lover of my friends, but it's fine. <laughs> So Furyborn is about a prophecy which foretells two queens, a queen of blood and a queen of light with the power of all seven elements with the with the power of all seven elements. The queen of blood will bring about ruin and destruction whereas the queen of light can save the world. When assassins ambush Riel Darden's best friend, also the crown prince, she reveals that she has the ability to perform all seven kinds of magic and so she must undergo trials to prove that she is the light queen and not the Blood Queen. If she fails, she will be executed. A thousand years later, the legend of Queen Riel is that, just a legend. Eliana Farakora is a servant in the Undying Empire 
and as a bounty hunter she thinks that she is safe from the dangers that of the empire however when her mother is captured she must team up with a rebel captain to get her back as riel and eliana span in a cosmic war that span millennia their stories interact in shocking ways loved furyborn and then kingsbane blew me away even more like just the way that these two stories interact and connect it connected in ways that I did not think possible, that I did not see coming, and it just kept me on the edge of my seat. I love the relationships between these characters. The thing especially that I love about this is Eliana and Riel are both very, very flawed, and you can see that these characters do not make the right decisions like a majority of the time, and it just leads to such an interesting story because they are, pow they are powerful women, and yet they are like angry, and they do things out of spite, and it's just like, it's almost like um, you can kind of see them moving in anti-parallel paths where one is moving more towards villainy and the other is moving more towards being heroic and just like the choices that they make and the things that they do to the people around them all of these interactions are just like very well played out and it's a book where i have a lot of theory on what i think is going to happen and so i just truly truly like adore the series and like there was a plot twist in here that like completely completely took me by surprise like it was so shocking that i cried while reading and i don't cry while reading a lot but like this one just like left me sitting there in shock and i'm like what like what just happened like it was so so well done and i'm really really looking forward to when the next book is released i think it's going to be fall 2020 but like i'm ready for it because i'm so so excited to see where this really unique and cool fantasy series is taken we have queen of air and darkness by cassandra clare which is the third novel in the dark artifices series as you can see she's thick wow i just like and this edition is really cool because it has illustrations in it which i loved find a cool one this tree here um this one came in the first editions and i went to a signing for queen of air and darkness so my copy is signed which is just great so the dark artifices follows emma carstairs who is a shadow hunter whose parents were murdered when she was younger and so she lives in the los angeles institute with the blackthorns however emma is hiding a dark secret in which she is in love with her parabatai julian blackthorn this is strictly forbidden by Shadowhunter law for a reason that nobody knows. Emma is on a mission for vengeance to find out just who murdered her parents all those years ago, which is somehow intertwined with a recent string of demonic murders that are happening across Los Angeles. And it just gets to be so much more than that. I mean, there are so many different characters. Cassandra Clare really is an ensemble cast writer and i love them all just like the amount of representation and things that happen it really talks a lot about like politics and government and oppression and especially like this last book had a lot of political overtones where we talk about like different factions and how people that are extremists can gain traction in like the popular view and i think it's very relevant to today's political environment and i think cassandra claire just does it really well through the lens of like a shadow hunter world um i really like it when authors kind of use fantasy worlds to explore problems that we are facing in the real world and i again just always love the relationships between these characters the characters themselves like i just loved so much about this series i could go on and on and on but i'm trying to keep this pretty brief however i will say like if i've not read cassandra clara she only gets better with time like seeing her growth from city of bones to now is just absolutely stunning and i would really really give the world of shadow hunters try if you have not because it is well worth all of the books that you have to read in the series it's a good time coming in at spot number four we have dark dawn by jay Kristoff, which i actually read the whole series this year which consists of nevernight god's grave and of course dark dawn nevernight follows the story of mia corvair whose parents were brutally murdered by the current emperor when she was a child on a mission for revenge she seeks the red church where she can train to become the deadliest assassin so what i love love about this series besides the fact that mia is such a badass is the lore is really really cool and it has such a unique style of storytelling 
so obviously there are the footnotes that everyone talks about but like honestly they add a lot to the story in my opinion even though some people feel like it can take them out there almost is like a story within the story of the footnotes if you are paying attention and it actually leads to a lot of clues of a lot of the questions that we have leading up to Dark Dawn. So I just think it has such like a unique and inventive way of storytelling. Like no one really has told a fiction story through prose that includes footnotes and that's really cool but also just the story itself and the lore of the world you find that you hear of this like lore and we have like the three suns in the sky that never set. Um, it's a re really unique system and it just ends up being so important in the end and I loved having that aspect there where like this mythology plays into the character's life. And also we have Mia who just grows so much as a character over these three books. I really loved seeing her growth and of course again the action is just like unparalleled. Like it is an assassin story. The things that happen were just like wild. Like the the magic system with different like shadows and shadow cat. It is truly just like an amazing adult fantasy and I highly recommend that you pick it up which is why it has landed so high on my list. And I really really think that Dark Dawn was an amazing conclusion to this amazing series. In spot number three we have The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black which is the conclusion to the Folk of the Air series which consists of The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. Jude was only seven when her mother and father were murdered by her mother's fairy general ex-husband and her and her sisters were whisked away to the land of Fae. Jude will do anything to earn a place in court as a lowly mortal but Fae are not quite fond of mortals so she has to work twice as hard to get any attention. When her plan to become a knight fails, Jude joins up and becomes a spy. However, Fairies are not quite fond of mortals, especially Prince Cardin, who goes out of his way to torture Jude. In order to survive in this land of Fae, Jude must learn some cruelness of her own. And this final book in the series is just like, wow, amazing. I read it in one sitting because I could not put it down. I love the story of Jude and Cardin so much. I mean, it kind of is iconic here on booktube and for a reason, and that is it's just really, really good. <laughs> Jude is just power hungry and she's not afraid to be that way and I really admire her about that. There are also so many different family dynamics here in terms of like sisterly bonds and brotherly bonds and the bond that Jude has with her adopted father, Magic, because he did adopt her, but he also murdered her family. And again, just the relationship between Jude and Cardin is just like really special and I think that they have to make a lot of progress in terms of being open and vulnerable with themselves to each other and just like this last book really just like took the cake for me and solidified this as one of my favorite series. It's it's short but it does a lot in a short length of time. I just truly honestly adore this series and I'm so happy that I read them as they came out because it has just been so much fun to read and it really means a lot to me and I'll hopefully be rereading the series again in the future. Coming in at spot number two is the entirety of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series which consists of Stalking Jack the Ripper, Hunting Prince Dracula, Escaping from Houdini, and finally Capturing the Devil. I couldn't decide. I love them all so much. Literally one of my new favorite series. I just had to put them all on the list. Audrey Rose Wadsworth is groomed to become the perfect Victorian lady. However, tea parties are not what she wants to do with her life. She wants to become a forensic scientist. And so she sneaks out to apprentice with her uncle, who is one of London's most esteemed forensic doctors. She soon gets drawn into the investigation of Jack the Ripper along with her uncle's prodigy student Thomas Cresswell and the clues bring her far closer to home than she would have ever thought possible in her sheltered life. And this is inspired by the infamously unsolved case. I body friend this whole series with Isabella from Throne of Pages and it was honestly such a magical experience to share with another person buddy reading a whole series where we both ended up giving all books five stars. Like if you can find that kind of magic in life, hold on to it. I feel like it just brought me and Isabella so close and the fact that we both just like adore these books so much. Like I love Audrey Rhodes Wadsworth as a character. It really means a lot to me to like see a woman trying to go and succeed in her dreams, especially in a time period where like it is completely frowned upon to, to do anything remotely close to this, especially like forensic medicine, like you're working with dead bodies and 
just not the fact that you're a woman pursuing science but pursuing science in a field where like you're working with dead bodies is just like that much more i really love the dynamic between audrey rose and thomas cresswell like it is one of the healthiest relationships i've ever seen portrayed on page like he's always doing what he can to like support her and let her own intelligence shine they really just like work well together in a team and like the banter they have between each other like i just love them i love them so much as a couple maybe one of my favorite literary ships like they're just perfect i love them so much and there are just like these books surprised me by like how feminist they were there are so many amazing feminist quotes in here and they're sprinkled in not in a way that like feels forced but because those are audrey rose's beliefs like it just it just works so so well i mean like i can go on forever about like how much i adore this series but like truly it made my 2019 reading these books and especially reading them with isabella like it was just an amazing amazing experience and that is why it was on the list at number two because i just love it so much so i don't think anyone will be surprised to know that my top book of 2019 was sorcery of thorns by margaret rogerson i love this book so much i read it twice this year truly like one of my new all-time favorite books. Elizabeth has been raised in one of the great libraries of Ostomir as a foundling. She longs to become a warden, which are those from the library that are tasked with protecting the outside world from magical grimoires, sentient spell books that can be malevolent. And if provoked, they can transform into gruesome monsters. When an act of sabotage releases one of the most dangerous grimoires out into the world. Elizabeth is framed for the crime and sent to face justice in the capital. With no one else to turn to, she must turn to her sworn enemy, Nathaniel Thorne, a sorcerer, when Elizabeth has been raised her whole life to believe that sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth and Nathaniel, along with Nathaniel's demonic servant, Silas, find themselves entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy to bring the great libraries down in flames. I just love these characters so much. We have Elizabeth, agent of chaos, Scrivener, which like, if you know me, I'm an agent of chaos, so I really relate to her in that aspect. And then Nathaniel is just like so sarcastic and witty, but he's hiding a lot of emotional pain. And then of course we have Silas, the demonic servant, who is just great. Like he's one of my favorite characters as well. I mean, I love all the characters, but I adored them all and I love seeing their dynamic and relationship as it balloons. I was honestly just spellbound and kept up the entire time reading this book. Margaret Rogerson has really, really beautiful lyric prose and I think one of the reasons that this book just stuck so much with me is because it is a book about a love of reading and like what it means to really love books. The setting of a magical library is just like absolutely perfect and these spell books that are sentient and like have feelings like it's just great and I I, I don't know there's just I wish I could talk better about my favorite books but I'm just in like an emotional puddle because I just like really really absolutely adored this book. This is like the perfect book for me and like I just loved it a lot, it mean a lot to me, and that's why it ended up in the number one spot for my top books of 2019. And so it's been a journey. Those were my top books of 2019. I really just feel like I read a lot of really cool books this year, and I'm so happy to have enjoyed my experience reading all of these and these top books that really just meant a lot to me. Leave a comment down below with what your favorite book of 2019 is, and in the meantime, have fun, read some books, I'll catch you guys in the next one.